Welcome to Business Today Television. I am Siddharth Zarabi and with me here, Mr. Shakti Kanta Das, the Governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Thank you very much, Mr. Das, for joining us at the India Today Business Today studio here at Davos at the World Economic Forum. You've been here. I want to begin with the big question. Last year, uh, the mood around the global economy and the pessimism that existed among CEOs was uh, quite a bit. How is the mood as far as the global economy is concerned? What's your own reading of the situation, particularly the supply side bottlenecks that caused a huge inflationary spiral all across the world, sir? See, the current, at the moment, uh, the mood all around the world is a lot better. When uh, COVID started, and more so when the Ukraine war started, followed by the spike in inflation, there was wide, you know, widespread expectation or apprehension, let me say, that uh, the world economy as a whole is moving towards recession. In the past, we have seen advanced economies, advanced you know, economies, whenever they have resorted to uh, monetary policy tightening to tackle the problem of high inflation, usually those cycles have ended in a recession. This time around, not unnaturally, there was, a, you know, there was apprehension that advanced economies and also emerging market economies will enter into a zone of recession. But that has not happened. That has not happened because I think this time around, the inherent resilience of individual uh, economies, both advanced economies as well as emerging market economies, I think the internal resilience of individual economies uh, have withstood the pressures much better. So therefore, recession has not happened, unlikely to happen, but nonetheless, growth has slowed down. So th therefore, while there is confidence coming from the fact and while there is optimism that recession has not happened, which was the worry earlier, but there is also the other realization that global growth has slowed down. I would say the mood is a lot better than last year because from an apprehensive mood of a recession or a hard landing. Now the mood is expectation of a soft landing, but remain in a territory of low growth. I am talking about the global situation. So there is optimism that, uh, I mean, coming to inflation, inflation which had spiked in 2022 almost everywhere, inflation has moderated. That is a matter of satisfaction for every central bank, for every country, but at the same time, Countries and, you know, individual countries are yet to reach their uh, target rates. It's the last mile which is proving to be, you know, challenging. Mm. So, therefore, the mood is a lot better. But at the same time, there is a, you know, there is a mood of cautiousness about how the future will play out, more so in the background of continuing geopolitical uh, tensions. And uh, so far as India is concerned, it's a different story. I think India has uh, responded to the... Uh, recent challenges lot better than India has done in the past and uh, what I have described elsewhere that the last four years have been the period of great volatility. Now in that period of great volatility, India has responded far better. Our inflation has moderated. It is within the target zone. We are moving towards 4 percent. GDP growth has revived three successive years including this year. Uh, of GDP growth, real GDP growth of 7% or above. Next year also our expectation is that, uh, that is 24-25, our expectation is that the GDP growth will be about 7%. So therefore, uh, the India story is uh, definitely more a story of greater resilience compared to the rest of the world. Governor, uh, do you see geopolitical flashpoints impacting India in any manner? You touched upon, upon it, it, but uh, uh, we have also geopolitics quite well over the last year. Is that at all any cause of concern? You see, whatever happens today in the world, the fact that India is a lot more integrated with the global economy and our, uh, you know, we have a, we, are, we have a, you know, we are one of the major players there. So naturally, whatever happens worldwide will affect India. But I think our inherent uh, resilience, our macroeconomic stability and our uh, approach in the recent years as we have seen, is different from other countries. So India, I would like to believe, and I say so on the basis of uh, a clear analysis of the facts on ground, that India will be able to deal with these challenges a lot better. India is very, be you know, well placed and better placed than many countries to deal with these challenges. Right here, uh, just the other day, the IMF said that they will 
have to revise India's growth fo forecast upwards from the one that they had already put out. Uh, is your own reading that for the current year, that growth could be even better than what has been projected by the RBI economists themselves? You see, we had projected 7% towards the end of October. Our previous projection for current year was 6.5%, but we projected 7% in October and in December monetary policy, mm -hmm. we stated that clearly. The projection given by the National Statistical Office came in January. NSO obviously had a data for one more month. Mm -hmm. They have access to a lot of, uh, you know, several other data to which we don't have access. So I think growth will, in the current year will be around 7.3%. If it is better, it is always welcome. And uh, what is interesting in all this process is that uh, the momentum of economic activity still is holding its ground and continues to be quite strong. And that gave us the confidence, you know, to put it very briefly, that gives us the confidence to say that next year's growth will also touch 7%. Uh, so between the last time that you publicly spoke to now, I want to ask you your own reading of the consumer lending space and the overall uh, sort of banking approach, lending approach to it. RBI has taken several steps. I don't want to go into that. But between then and now, would it be possible for you to offer our viewers a certain uh, view as far as consumer lending is concerned and any concerns that may bother the RBI economists? You see, all segments of uh, lending, all segments of the credit market are under our uh, supervision and we are moni we monitor them very clearly. Wherever we see some incipient signs of a possible stress, we act preemptively. So whatever we have done in the consumer lending space, in the personal loan space, was because we, we thought that it is perhaps leading towards a kind of a stress and we wanted to avoid that. So it was a preemptive measures. But even now the numbers are within uh, reasonable limits and uh, we have no major cause of uh, concern. So as we wind down the conversation, I know you have a very, very tight schedule. I just want one more point on your reading of the inflationary situation from a calendar year perspective. It is 2024. Uh, given what happened in 2022, your, the RBI's measures, the central government's measures, how is the price situation likely to uh, pan out in 2024? Uh, and we have our own big Lok Sabha election as an event. Uh, and obviously you will not be taking your eyes off the price situation. How is it likely to pan out? You see, inflation, CPI inflation, headline inflation is moderating and this trend of moderation towards 4% will continue. That is our expectation. I have said elsewhere that next year, 24-25 financial year, uh, the average inflation will be 4.5%. So therefore, inflation month after month, you are talking about the calendar year 24, inflation, our expectation at this point of time is that it will moderate. Within inflation, the core part of inflation has also moderated significantly. It is in fact little below 4% now. And that, uh, you know, core inflation is substantially impacted by monetary policy actions. Absolutely. So core inflation has come around 3.8% or so. It's a food inflation which needs careful monitoring because food, food inflation is uh, exposed to external, there are two external risk factors like uh, some, you know, some disruption in supply chain or climate, or, or, uh, climate related changes or domestic uh, weather related uh, events. You had uh, heavy rain in one month and suddenly the prices of tomato, they go up and causing vegetable inflation to really impact the headline inflation is a substantial manner. So given these uncertainties with regard to food inflation, the volatility built, uh, built around it because of weather-related events and because of external uh, developments, that is, a cause, that is one area which needs careful monitoring. So far as rubby crop is concerned, initially there were uh, fears of rubby sowing area falling short of the, you know, the annual average. But as we speak here, I think uh, the shortfall is very, very marginal compared to last year's, uh, you know, bumper crop. Mm -hmm. The rubby sowing is now almost, uh, it's almost there at last year's level. That is also a positive for our local 
a food, you know, domestic food inflation. But the fact that there is volatility coming from external factors, external sources, and the uncertainty around weather-related events, they need carefully, they need to be carefully watched, especially from the point of view of food inflation. My final question, sir, since you have lots of meetings here, uh, would it be uh, possible for you to share what uh, you are asked about the Indian economy by various people from across the globe, anything that you can recall offhand? I think uh, there is a lot of interest to know how Hind India has managed it uh, with regard to maintain this kind of macroeconomic uh, resilience, this kind of financial stability. Basically, people like to know how India has been able to manage it. So there is a uh, lot of uh, interest in that area. But there is, uh, growing, uh, there is evidence of growing confidence on uh, India and the you know, potential and the robustness of the Indian economy. So on one hand, at the fiscal level, at the central government level, we have Modi nomics. Has anyone told you that they are also following Das capital very closely? <laughs> <laughs> That's for people like you to assess or say. But we should not get carried away by, you know, such, uh, uh, you know, uh, by such, uh, on a serious note. I think uh, we have to remain focused. We have achieved all this. You know, banking sector has shown remarkable turnaround. The economy is showing its resilience. Financial sector is remaining stable. So therefore, we have to not only preserve this, but we have to further build on that. I think that should be our focus. Those are very, very important words from the RBI governor, a person who has restored a sense of calm not just to inflation and our monetary policies, but to the central bank itself. Many thanks, sir, for Thank taking you. out the time. With that, it's a wrap on this. We'll be back with more. Until then, goodbye. Thank you. Darwin Platform Group of Companies is one of the fastest growing diversified Indian conglomerates with global footprints. It is setting up offices globally and tying up with companies across the globe for multiple sectors. The company has ventured into real estate and construction, stockbroking and finance, arms and ammunitions, mining, airlines and many other sectors.